Back at the PlayStation Showcase in May, Sony announced their new handheld which is now known as the PlayStation Portal. I was initially excited for the first 5 seconds. 1080p at 60fps on an 8 inch screen in and of itself is great, but reality is disappointing. Releasing November 15th for $200, it gives gamers the option to stream PS5 games and... Well, that's pretty much it. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. It cannot run games on its own. It needs a strong Wi-Fi connection, and it lacks many quality of life features, such as Bluetooth compatibility. Specifically, you can only use wired headphones or the compatible Sony headphones. Long story short, there's a reason people are not happy or excited about this device, especially with it costing $200. Many, like me, wanted PlayStation's next handheld to be, well, an actual handheld not an accessory for the PS5. The more I see of the portal, the more I wonder, will there ever be another PlayStation handheld? My personal answer is simple. It is unlikely, yet not impossible. The way I get to the answer, however, is not so simple. Let's get into the video. Let's start with PlayStation's first and most successful handheld. PlayStation released the PSP PlayStation Portable on December 12, 2004 in Japan, then releasing it in all other regions in 2005. In North America, it retailed for $250, which was a decent price. The design itself was very good, with a nice large screen. It also had good games, including games remade to be put on it. Yet, it had deadly competition, some may say the deadliest. It had to compete with the Nintendo DS. Now obviously the DS lifetime sales are nothing short of spectacular at over 154 million units sold. Yet somehow, the PSP held its own eventually selling over 80 million units. Objectively and financially, it was a huge success for Sony. Interestingly enough, a huge incentive for getting a PSP was its ability to be hacked and run emulated games. Certainly not what the creators had in mind, but if it sells units, eh. Sony was so happy about the sales of the PSP and its updated variants that it eventually announced its official sequel, the PlayStation Vita. The Vita released on December 17th, 2011 in Japan, followed by other territories on February 22nd, 2012. Like the PSP, the Vita retailed at a compelling $250 and had unique features. However, I think the Vita was slated to be as or more successful than the PSP, given that the market had changed. The Nintendo 3DS released almost a year before on March 27, 2011. Yet, it was priced the same as the Vita at launch, though it eventually sold for less. Given that the Vita was much more powerful, it could have played a larger variety of games than the 3DS could. It also had a 5-inch OLED screen, which was far superior to the 3DS's. Oh, it's beautiful. Additionally, the Wii U would release the same year, in November of 2012, and be a flop. From this perspective, the PS Vita should have filled in a significant gap in the market. For those wanting more out of the Wii U, they could have turned to the Vita. From this perspective, the PS Vita had huge sales potential. Until, of course, poor planning and stupidity was brought into the mix. Now there are numerous videos on the Vita detailing how and why it failed as much as it did, so I will simply summarize here. Number one, even though it had good, even great games, they were not nearly enough. Some studios that dedicated working on Vita games never actually put out anything, and in general, the games were way too far and few between. Additionally, like the Wii U, it had little to no third-party support. It doesn't matter how awesome or cheap any console or handheld is, if it does not have games, it won't sell. Number two, the release date was an issue. Though it theoretically could have done well against the competition, releasing the Vita at the end of the PS3's life cycle and one and a half years before the PS4 was a huge issue. Developers need a lot of time in advance to make or switch their games to a new generation of hardware. Thus, in this situation, you have Sony wanting their first-party studios to develop their games for PS4, and you have third-party studios wanting to develop games for PS4 and PS3. Essentially, everyone was so busy, so of course they would want to put their games on the next-gen console as well as the PS3 that had sold over 70 million units at the time. Number three would of course be the marketing, as Sony did a horrible job with that part as well. And the issues don't even stop there. Who could forget Sony requiring everyone to use their proprietary SD memory cards, which caused a ton of ill will towards the company. Anyway, there were many other smaller reasons that the Vita failed, but for the purposes of this video, you get the point. This all led to Sony abandoning the Vita. 
Sony ultimately knew that the PS4 was going to be far more important than the Vita, which is sad because the library of games available to the Vita by the end of its life rivaled or surpassed the 3DS. But since the Vita debacle, Sony has shown absolutely no interest in any sort of handheld, and who could blame them? Yet with the PlayStation Portal coming out, are times changing? Is Sony looking to make another handheld? Well, there are of course reasons for Sony to make another handheld. First off, I like money! Second, if they make a handheld that can play every PlayStation game ever, that's pretty enticing. This way they could potentially get a good audience, especially if it's priced well. Also, having additional competition against Nintendo can never hurt, as competition is what creates great products for us consumers. Unfortunately, there aren't actually many more reasons for there to be another PlayStation handheld. At least, not in the current market. On the other hand, there are many reasons why Sony should not make another handheld. The current market is more saturated than ever, with the Switch having many high quality games, while the ROG Strix and Steam Deck are essentially mobile desktops that support many games that release on PC. Phones in our pockets are getting very powerful too, and you can even make your own PlayStation handheld right now with some phone accessories. Also, the PlayStation 4 is currently the fifth best-selling console of all time at over 117 million units sold, and the PS5 is currently selling extremely well. Why change what's working? Another reason is PlayStation VR, another platform that studios have to develop games for. Throw a handheld into the mix, and the studios would be stretched too thin. If you are Sony, why screw up your workflow by shifting and adding resources to make games for another type of gaming device? The list goes on, but I'll stop here. So with all this, it's unlikely for Sony to release a proper handheld device. Yet, it's not impossible, oddly enough because of the PlayStation Portal existing. Let's take a step back for a moment, because this device in its current state is not impressive, but it could have been. It's a great foundation for what a PlayStation handheld could be. Imagine it can properly stream PS5 games, which alleviates any need for a GPU as powerful as a Steam Deck or ROG Strix. This would also mean the battery life would be much better than those handhelds as well. It also means it can have third-party support through PS5 streaming, alleviating that issue. Also imagine that it can run almost every PS1 through PS4 game as well as all PSP and Vita games. It already has a great screen, so outfit it with actual features like Bluetooth, third-party SD card support, etc. Suddenly, it kinda looks like a pretty good handheld, especially if it's priced competitively. Of course, this still all is wishful thinking. To clarify, the PlayStation Portal shows Sony has thought about a handheld to some extent, but the probability of us seeing a handheld like the PSP or Vita is still extremely unlikely. The truth is, Sony isn't going to release another handheld for a long time, if ever. Now is this really a bad thing? Actually no, I don't think so. I would rather have Sony Studios focus on first party PS5 games, with some resources going towards PSVR games. I'm sure some PlayStation fans might be put off by this, and I understand that, but then you look at the decision to release the overpriced PlayStation Portal that lacks pretty much anything of substance. If this is anything to go off of, maybe never making another handheld is the best thing for everybody. I would like to thank everyone for watching, and please let me know your thoughts. Perhaps you view the situation differently. Do you want PlayStation to make a worthwhile handheld? Do you actually like the PlayStation Portal? Let me know in the comments down below. I will see you all in the next video.